Mr. Nominee, that is Professor Ali Pate. Yeah. Distinguished colleagues, we have before us another nominee of Mr. President, Alaji Mohammed Idris. Uh, the, uh, welcome to the hallowed chambers of the Senate. Uh, if you have something to add to your CV or a summarized version of your resume, you may do so and thereafter answer a few questions from the distinguished Senators, the floor is yours. Thank you, Your Excellency, the President of the Senate. Your Excellency, the Deputy Senate President and other leadership, members of the leadership of the Senate, distinguished Senators, this is an uncommon privilege to be nominated by Mr. President to offer services to our great nation. Let me place on record my sincere appreciation to the President of Nigeria and to members of the National Assembly for this very rare opportunity. As mentioned, my name is Mohammed Idris. I was born in May of 1966 in Katsina, but I am from Niger State. My father is a Nupe man, and I'm also from a Nupe man from Niger State, from Baku local government. Because my father was in the public service, we went around this country, and therefore, my primary education happened in so many cities across Nigeria. But I finished at Central Primary School, Kwantagora, went to Government Secondary School, Ijo, finished in 1982, went for some remedial course at Zungeru College of Advanced Studies in Bida, Niger State, and then proceeded in 1983 when I got admission as an, as an undergraduate student at uh, Osman Danfordo University now, sorry, University of Sokoto, now Osman Danfordo University. I had a pre-degree program there, a special pre-degree program that lasted one year. And then I was enrolled as an undergraduate student at the Department of Modern European Languages. I took a, I took a degree in English in 1987. And by the special request of my university, I was asked to stay behind to also teach as an NYC member in the same university. Therefore, from being a student around August of 1987, I became a pupil lecturer, so to say, in the same university, teaching English and communication skills to undergraduates. This was a special request made by my own university at that time. After the NYSC, I was also given a part-time job before my full-time appointment as a lecturer. But before that happened, the Federal College of Education, Katsina, sought my services to also come and help to consolidate the Department of English and Communication Arts in Federal Qualification Katsina. So I moved there. I started work there in January of 1989. And after a few years, I became also a postgraduate student at Bayero University, Kano. There at Bayero University, Kano, I also have the, I had the privilege 
of also teaching some undergraduate students English and communication skills at Bayero University. This lasted up until 1994. Upon graduation, after my master's degree, I came back to the Federal Qualification Katina, but I didn't stay long because I had a different passion. I had a passion to teach and inculcate communication to the minds of especially people in the public service. I realized at that time that there was this communication gap between members of the civil service and the Nigerian public, and so I picked special interest in that. I attended some courses in that regard, went to various course centers in Nigeria and overseas, and I specialized as a communications, corporate communications consultant. After that, I set up the first, one of the first corporate communication companies in northern Nigeria, and it's still existing. This was around 1994, 1995 rather. Our clientele included uh, uh, government establishments, uh, the organized private sector, and so many others. Now, communication, because it is so dear to our dear nation, formed the bedrock of my belief and my passion, because I felt that without communication, there couldn't be anything, without proper communication, there couldn't be any meaningful development, and therefore, I emphasize on the role of communication in the development of our dear nation. My company, like I said earlier, had so many clients across government and the, uh, and the private sector. In 2003, I set up the first publication called, the first publication dealing with uh, uh, business and economy in northern Nigeria, it, is, it was called The Market. It debuted in, 2000 and, in 2003 and it continued to be in the newsstand until around 2011, when we thought that we should expand that and establish a broader newspaper. It is called Blueprint Newspaper. We established Blueprint Newspapers in 2011, and since then has become one of the most respected national dailies in this country. I want to state, Your Excellency, Mr. President, that, newspaper, that blueprint newspaper is one of the first newspaper to break the story of Boko Haram and especially the bombing of the police force headquarters at that time. Even when the Nigerian police were giving some information about those who they thought were responsible for that bombing because we decided to get some journalists to embed themselves the, you know, with the terrorists at that time, we were able to get first-hand information that was useful for the Nigerian government in tackling the menace of that insurgency. I recall that the international media were quoting blueprint newspapers because we were giving the most incisive information about Boko Haram at that time. That newspaper is still there, and it is running uh, up until this time. Again, I established a radio station. It is called the Wii FM. Actually, it was in existence, but uh, you know, with a different ownership. But I bought into it, I revived it, and it's now one of the leading voices, one of the leading FM stations in, this count, in, in, in Abuja here. Again, blueprint newspapers, because with the president of Nigeria, then President Mohamed Buhari, graciously gave us a license to float a television station. I want to say it, distinguished senators, that Blueprint newspaper has established that, but we are doing some trainings now, and in the next two or three months, we'll be on air. It's one of, going to be one of the biggest television stations in this country. Distinguished senators, I also had a stint in the construction industry. Around 2008, I set up a company 
that went into construction and real estate development in Nigeria. The success of that perhaps led Mr. President, President Muhammad Buhari, to nominate me and subsequently appointed me a chair of the Abuja Property Development Company. That company is government owned. Before I took over, it was almost maribond, almost bankrupt. But when I got there in 2008, I made sure that that, as a board chair, I made sure that that company was resuscitated. And I'm happy to report that today, the APDC is one of the best private companies owned by government in this country. Because of that success, again, Mr. President reappointed me this year into that board. Of course, all the boards have now been dissolved. Mr. President, I am a member of the International Press Institute. I helped to bring the international media to this country in 2018. It was the first time that the cream of editors from all over the, all over the world converged on Abuja to hold what they call the annual congress of the IPI. It is one of the most prestigious media organizations in the world. Again, Mr. President, I am a distinguished member of the Nigerian Institute of Public Relations. At some point, I was chair of the Institute in Kaduna chapter. I also became a fellow. I'm a member of the African Public Relations Association and the sitting secretary general of the Newspaper Proprietors Association of Nigeria. I'm also a member of the American-based Online News Association. Distinguished senators, like I said, I'm Mohammed Idris, a teacher, a public relations consultant, a media entrepreneur, an investor in the real estate and construction industry. Thank you very much. Let's start with uh, the Sioux Senator Wadada. Thank you, Mr. President, sitting as chair, distinguished colleagues. Um, I am Senator Ahmed Wadada Aliyu Sarkinyak in Kefi, representing Nasarawa West Senatorial District of Nasarawa State. I still remain a horse rider. Uh, the nominee before us <clears throat> is very well known to me. And um, his resume and uh, short presentation, verbal presentation about himself also tell us the much we should expect uh, from him. First and foremost, for socioeconomic growth and development of any nation, the education and enlightenment level of such a nation uh, plays a very fundamental role. The nominee before us has been a great contributor to the educational and enlightenment of the citizenry, having played the roles he had played over the years, which of course is or are all contained in his resume and what he said. Again, the private role he played is also cannot be wished away because the private sector in contemporary economic development is supposed to be the main driver of economic development. Government only plays the role of providing enabling environment. And he has played over the years as a private sector player, contributed greatly to the socioeconomic development of Nigeria from the resume and the verbal presentation he has made about himself. My dear colleagues, it is time that 
we put round peg in round holes. The nominee before us has the requisite competence to be a member of the Federal Executive Council under the government of Ashwaju Bola Ahmed Tinubu, having known, I mean, it is well known to us the commitment of Ashwaju Bola Ahmed Tinubu to turn around the fortunes of Nigeria. And um, that's why the renewed hope is today at hand. I think the nominee before us in all ramifications fits into the sphere or the cycle or the confinement of uh, uh, the renewed hope. So I call on us to, to, to give him the needed uh, support so that he, we, we screen and eventually confirm him to be uh, a minister under the present administration. Thank you, my colleagues. Very distinguished colleagues, I'm sure the president took cognizance of all the qualities enumerated by distinguished Senator Walada before nominating him. So I will, I will prefer that we go straight into questions so that the nominee can answer the questions and then uh, and take leave of the Senate. Distinguished Senator Garuba. Thank you very much, the Senate President, and my distinguished colleague. Uh, Mr. President, the nominee is known to me. We went to the same secondary school. He was my junior, and he has performed very well. But despite that, just like other people have said, we have presented among the best candidates, and uh, we will be happy for him to take questions. And I would want to take the first question. Uh, Mohammed, you are an entrepreneur and a communication consultant. Today we have unemployment in this country. Nigerians, some of them have graduated 10 years without jobs. Uh, and uh, there is information, misinformation in the country. I've been receiving request from my constituency that uh, I must make recommendations for them to get jobs. We want to see what you could do differently to make Nigerians believe in the system, that the system, if you actually work hard and you are qualified, that the system will give you that opportunity without knowing the senator, without knowing the minister, and we want to give that Nigerian that confidence. How can we achieve that? Thank you very much. Thank you, distinguished Senator Garuba. In other words, equal opportunity to the child of the farmer and the child of the senator. And secondly, to avoid people graduating and going back home to unemployment for years, sometimes between five, seven, ten years. What can the nominee bring to the table by way of initiative to create more employment opportunities for Nigerians? I, I think that's the summary of your question. Senator Zam. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, my name is Senator Dr. Taitu Zam. I represent the dynamic people of Benue Northwest Senatorial District. Mr. Nominee, from your presentation, you come from the mass media profession. And one of the pillars of democracy is an informed citizenry. Are you satisfied with the quality of reportage of governmental activities in Nigeria? And if yes, I'd like to ask, how much is the Nigerian citizen aware of the programs 
of the present administration? If your answer is no, what can you do to improve on the quality of governmental information that reaches the Nigerian grassroots? Thank you very much. Thank you, distinguished Senator Zam. For instance, he achieved a lot under the Abuja Property Development Company. But I wonder how many people in Sokoto and Brano know about Abuja Property Development Company. So you are saying that, you are asking whether it's satisfied with the repertoire in respect of governmental policies. Because a lot of people may not even partake in government uh, programs if they are not even aware of those government programs. Uh, let me ask distinguished Senator uh, Shehu Boba Omar. Thank you, Mr. President. Sitting as the chair, distinguished colleagues, my name is Shehu Boba Omar, representing good people of Bauchi South. Mr. Nomini, uh, let me start by congratulating you. Listening to your presentations and going through your CV, you, as an English teacher and also a pioneer of various med media outfits, such as uh, Blueprints and, uh, and FM stations. So if my question is, if being confirmed by these hallowed chambers, what are you going to do to, before then, I know you are aware of our famous Federal Radio Corporation of Nigeria, known as FRCN, Kaduna. When we were growing in the late 70s and 80s, is the famous radio stations that 19, 19 Northern State rely upon, which I believe you believe in that. And now, I believe you are also aware that the nature of FRC in Kaduna is virtually in the state of Comitos. All the machines and tools are obsolete. Going by your experience in the media outlet, if eventually confirmed by these hallowed chambers, and eventually Mr. President appoint you the Administrator of Communication, what will you do to reorganize, rejuvenate, and bring back life to our famous FRC in Kaduna? Thank you, sir. Distinguished Senator Biggie. Thank you, Mr. President. I remain in Piggy Baranada. Mr. Nomini, about 41 years ago, you attended the, your secondary school and obtained a GCE. But the document before us here is just a statement of result. There is no certified statement of result gotten from WIEC or the Executive Council. How can you prove that to the Senate that this statement of result is free? Thank you. Yes, distinguished minority leader. Thank you, Mr. President. Distinguished colleagues, uh, our dear nominee, congratulations. Mr. President, I remember the good days of um, this program that talks of good people, good nation. And it was meant to put Nigeria in good light, to showcase Nigeria to the world that uh, all about Nigeria is not about criminality and crisis and so on and so forth. As a media practitioner, sir, 
do you think the media since that time till now have portrayed Nigeria in good light to the world? Uh, I, I had the opportunity to study in Germany for about four years. And I know there are bad things that happen in Europe and any other country in the world. But you will not see this from their media, you know, telling the details of everything that is inimical to the growth and development of their country. But the reverse seems to be the case in Nigeria. Do you think that the media in Nigeria have portrayed Nigeria in their reportage in good light? Or you also have the blueprint. I, I, I like that paper. I've been reading it. And um, how do you think, if you are given the opportunity to serve in this government, how do you think you use the media and your own uh, media stations, both the print and the electronic media, to portray this country in good light? Thank you. This is Senator Solomon Adiola Olamileko. Thank you, Mr. President. Sitting as chair, Adiola Solomon Olamileko, representing Ogun West Senatorial District in the Senate of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Mr. President, let me join another colleague of ours in congratulating the nominee as one of the intending minister of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Now, having listened to you and looking at your resume, it shows you are a media guru, aside being a teacher. And um, having been involved in media over the years, I know you have one or two things to do with the Ministry of Information and Culture. Number one, are you satisfied with the level of our information management as a country? Number two, the following agencies are under the Ministry of Information and Culture. One, the Nigerian Broadcasting Corporation. Two, NTA. Are you satisfied with the way the issuance of licensing of radio stations are being carried out presently? Two, the Nigerian Broadcasting Corporation have existed the federal government budget. And the reason why is that they are capable of generating enough revenue to run their day-to-day -day activities. I want you to extract the current Nigerian Broadcasting Corporation as it's where, as at today. And are you satisfied with the performances of the Nigerian Television Authority when compared with the channels, the TVC, and all other TV stations of this world? Thank you. Uh. <coughs> Distinguished Senator Sandy Musa. Thank you, Mr. President, sitting as chair. I am Mohammed Sani Musa, representing Niger East Senatorial District. My distinguished colleagues, the nominee standing before us as a representative, a nominee representing Niger State, and that is our constituency. The three distinguished senators of the Federal Republic in this chamber can attest to the credibility of this nominee. The passion this nominee has in driving not only the youth of this country, but the whole Nigerian people in terms of attitude change 
cannot be overemphasized. As he stands, if you look at him very well, you will see a man of honor standing before you. He is the publisher of Blueprint newspapers. We are all politicians. We have seen what happened during the days of campaigns. But I can attest that there are newspapers that have exalted, they excel themselves not to be partisan and they report as it is. It is not the making of the newspaper but the brain behind the newspaper. I can also attest that he is in a position to create a brand strategy for this country that will give every one of us the image we so desire. He has been a member of so many international PR organizations. We don't need to always appropriate the meager resources we have, but well, we should be able to use the strengths of characters of some of the Nigerians we have, like him, to sell our image, to propagate our image to the international community. He is a mobilizer that can also give credibility by way of image to the policies that this administration or any other administration that will come to Nigeria, come in Nigeria, will roll out. He will be able to give that image so that there will be understanding. I'm happy that a lot of questions have been thrown to him, of which is far more capable in responding to them. This administration, especially Mr. President, His Excellency Aswaju Bola Ahmed Tinubu, have shown that he has come to renew the hope of Nigerians. If you look at the age bracket of the people he has nominated for ministerial position, these are people that will not only introduce the policies, but they are also going to be the ones to implement these policies. The energy is there. And I believe Muhammad Idris is one individual that will be able to rally even among his colleagues in the cabinet when formed, and whichever responsibility given to him. I believe is not only information that he will be able to manage. Mohammed Idris can go into any portfolio, can do his best to any portfolio of responsibility given to him in this country. So I stand on behalf of three of us to appeal to my fellow distinguished colleagues to see reason after he has responded to appeal to Mr. President to allow the nominee a leave of the Senate of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Thank you, Mr. President. Our esteemed nominee, you may now answer the questions. Thank you, Excellency, the Senate President. Uh, the first uh, question, I believe, is from uh, distinguished Senator Garwa, uh, my senior in the secondary school. He asked about uh, unemployment and what I can do differently to ensure that uh, uh, Nigerian youths are gainfully employed. Well, uh, this is not a tax for, for government alone, and I have demonstrated that uh, in my uh, business uh, uh, practice. A distinguished uh, 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 President of the Senate, I'm employing over 200 people now. Over 100 of them are Nigerians, and uh, 100 of them are Nigerian graduates, those who have you know, uh, obtained degrees from Nigerian universities. 
Now, what that tells me is that once an indemnity environment is created, it is possible for most of our youths out there on the street to be gainfully employed. That's number one. Secondly, it is also important that policies formulated by government should encourage participation by the private sector. Only in so doing can opportunities be created so that those our youth that are out there in the street would now be taken out of, uh, out of the street. So uh, first, private sector people have to be encouraged to employ people, and the only way that can be done is by creating the enabling environment for private sector to thrive. There is no way that government will continue to employ people. I think the era of thinking that government is the employer of all members of the Nigerian public is over. And if you look at the policies that the president, President Bola Ahmed Chinubu, is already formulating, the mere fact that about a trillion naira has been saved and is going to be plowed back into the economy will mean that there is going to be more private sector participation. And this will in turn stimulate private sector growth that will also be an enabler for employment for our teaming youths. The second one is from the distinguished uh, senator from Benue South. He asked about whether we are satisfied with the level of uh, uh, information that this Nigerian citizenry is getting. Well, I don't think we are satisfied, and I think that this is one of the things that we should, we should strive to improve. Unless credible information is being put out there for Nigerians to consume, there will always be room for rumor. There will always be room for, inf for misinformation that may lead to fake news and all kinds of things. I will give an example. Because there was this intense agitation, intense anxiety, I should say, for ministerial list to get to the Senate. So many, because it hadn't come, and the information flow is a bit limited, so many Nigerian youths that are staying idle there were formulating their own list and sending to the members of the public. I have myself seen not less than seven lists. Only one of them had my name suggested in that. But as somebody who has some some experience and some expertise in how news, credible news, is sourced and disseminated. I know that most, if not all of those leads, were actually mere fabrication. But it's important and it is pertinent that government must provide credible information to Nigerians. That is the only way that the transparency and accountability that government is upholding on will always be guaranteed. The more you uphold, the less you are trusted. And we have this in communications parlance that 50% of the execution of any government project is actually in the communication. So if you don't communicate, people don't get to know what is it that you are doing about. I will cite an example with this Harold Chamber. This is one of the most reported arms of government. What we are doing here now is being beamed across Nigeria and across the world. Now, what that means is that Nigerians are able to judge on their own the quality of the nominees, the quality of the questions, and the responsibility of the Nigerian Senate itself in ensuring that there's credibility in the process that in turn lead to a credible formation of a cabinet that we'll all be proud of. So I, I feel that we need to do more uh, as, as Nigerians. And if I'm, I'm part of the government, I feel that I will also help to ensure that communication flow is absolutely important, not just in, in the newspapers, over the radio stations and the television. There is also the responsibility that we have to ensure that all our digital assets that have been used to misinform Nigerians are looked at again, improved on. For example, most of the information we get are through the WhatsApp, through Facebook, through uh, Twitter, uh, you know, and, and all of that, TikTok and all of that. Now, if you're not careful, 
The tendency is for you to consume anything you see on these digital assets as credible information. Uh, but they are not. But we need to do so much to regulate that. It's not something that we, we can insulate ourselves from. This is a problem that happens all over the world. Uh, like I said, I'm a member of the Online News Association you know, based in the U.S. And I know that at every conference that we go to, every country, including America itself, is complaining about fake news. So what do we do with these digital assets? What kind of regulation do we put in place? How do we use that to promote credible flow of information among Nigerians? And I think this is very, very important. We try to do the same during the campaign. Because if you observe, for those of you with, you know, in the APC, I served as the director of strategic communication for the campaign. And I know that we use digital assets to promote the manifesto of the party. I think it is important that we, we need to do that. I'm not as satisfied as we should be. I think things can be better. And we have a collective responsibility to ensure that that is done for peace, for unity, and for the pro progress of our dear nation. Now, uh, yeah, this is tied to the report of government uh, 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 programs. Now, when I began my career, I, I mentioned here that I left government service as, as a lecturer in 1995. One of the first things I did was the creation at that time of official newsletters in both English and Hausa for many local governments in Katina, where I was based at that time. It was a first, and they were using that to get even international attention. We made sure that they circulated these newsletters to uh, development partners that were present in Nigeria. At that time, of course, the, the use of the internet was a bit limited, but you know, physical copies were being, were being represented. So we can do more of that. Government agencies should be encouraged to tell Nigerians the bulk of the information they have at their disposal. In any case, this information is meant for Nigerians and therefore should not be kept uh, at bay. Um, the senator from Bauchi South asked about FRC and Kaduna, uh, and then it's also tied with what uh, the distinguished senator from Open West also talked about. Are you satisfied with uh, the way the agencies under the Ministry of Information, the MDC, and the NT, and all that? Now, what, what I would say is this. I, I think that uh, the FRCN and NT are doing a great job, but they can do better. And the way they can do that is by ensuring that they resort to technology. Pay attention to new technologies that will ensure that information flows. If you look at NTA, for example, if you put it on, despite the fact that it has one of the best you know, uh, brands in this country as far as reportage is concerned, if you look at the, the quality of the pictures, and then you switch and go to other private, private ones, people will not be encouraged to, to get themselves glued uh, to the NTA. So there must be some form of investment in, again, the digital assets. And not just in the projects, when I mean investment, not just buying the equipment, ensuring that those who are going to man these equipment are properly trained and retrained because Technology is such that if you stay in one position for too long, for more than six months, you find yourself obsolete. You need to move and evolve with time. So that should be done. Now, there is a particular thing I want to talk about, especially concerning the MBC. Um, I think that uh, the MBC that is the regulator of broadcast in this country need to really move more uh, with the time. For example, the fees that the NBC requests that private owners of radio, TV pay before they can air their programs need to be reviewed downwards. If, for example, somebody wants to invest in a television station and is asked to pay 250 million naira, this is even before you buy any asset. You are requested to pay 250 million naira. Where do you get the funding to now begin to do the rest of the investment? But 
the regulatory part of them, I think they are doing very well and they need to, 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 to strengthen that. Now, someone also asked, distinguished senator, asked about uh, the issuance of uh, licenses. Licenses come with responsibility. Today, there are over a thousand licenses that are issued. And many of the people that get these licenses are politicians like us. You get this license, and then you put them in your bag, and you go and lock it up somewhere in your house. How does that contribute to information dissemination? Why did you get that license in the first place? Only 50%, or even less, of the licenses granted by the federal government are actually in operation today. Only less than 50%. So where are the rest? I think that there should be some regulation, you know, tighter regulation to ensure that you must first of all be a practitioner or a genuine investor in the media industry before such licenses are granted. I think we need to do that and then control the proliferation. Now, what I mean about proliferation is not that every other radio or TV station that is there is not doing well. Specialized licenses ought to be given for specialized audiences. I think the NBC should take note of that. I am aware that they are already doing that for, for example, the Nigerian police, the Federal Road Safety Commission, and a few government agencies. But I think they need to do more of that so that people can rely on such uh, uh, platforms. And uh, distinguished uh, senator from my state, thank you for your kind words. I, I feel humbled that uh, you find me so worthy, the three of you, for your esteemed consideration. I thank you for your kind words and I oppose them. The, the nominee must say uh, congratulations. In advance, you have answered the questions, and uh, we, are, we, are, we, are, we are quite impressed. So you may now take leave of the Senate.